Okay, welcome everyone to our uh, September uh, meeting. Um, just want to remind everyone that we have our community of practice site uh, is available. I shared that in the chat. I'm going to share this again. So you're um, all welcome to check and bookmark the page and check it regularly because we have updates all the time. Um, there is an upcoming event that is going to happen. We will ask PMO to push it to all the CAEs. So be on the lookout. It will be uh, starting a monthly event on cyber competitions. And um, it, we piggyback on this initiative and we're going to call it uh, Meet Your Cyber Competition. So <laughs> it will be uh, um, on the third Thursday, of, uh, Tuesday of every month. Uh, and we're going to invite uh, vendors to uh, come and present their cyber competition. So be on the lookout on on a, um, a mass mailing regarding that. With that said, I want to turn it over to Corrine. Uh, she's posted. Uh, maybe Corrine, you want to give a, an overview for the new. There are a couple of brand new CAEs on the line with us today. So maybe you want to just give an overview of the insight. And also she shared. Um, a link in the chat uh, for all of you uh, to look at the events. So go ahead, Corinne. So hi, everybody. I'm Corinne Sandy from Whatcom Community College, and I'm the PI and director for the National Cybersecurity Training and Education Center, or INSIGHT. We're a national center funded by the National Science Foundation, ATE program and um, there are some opportunities here for people um, under the centers of academic resource box we have on there if you're interested in being a mentor or a reviewer you can fill out a form there that um, so you can sign up so especially for our new CAEs um, you can participate as a mentor or a reviewer if you would like there are um, there is some uh, funds attached to that um, we also have under our events which i put the link in the chat <laughs> several opportunities for anybody who's interested this includes the um, cybersecurity maturity model certification training so cmmc workshop which has been pretty popular. I think we have a few spots left for September. This is um, uh, this is training on this requirement for all vendors that work with the Department of Defense. They have to reach a certain um, level of cyber. And so this workshop is to, it goes over the requirements <laughs> and you the, a lot of the faculty are using it in their class. Uh, it's a Canvas course, which we share so you can utilize that if you want. Then I wanted to point out the National Cyber League uh, team funding application. So we're funding 10 um, high school classes. Uh, so we'll pay the entry fee for all the students in one class in a high school. So if you know any high schools that may be interested in participating, um, please let them know. And then you can see some of the other items, but just wanted to let everybody know this resource is available to you. Um, if you're interested in joining, you can. It doesn't cost anything. And we're basically just here to help. So that's it in a nutshell. Thank you so much, Corinne. And I'm going to hand it over to Sandra, who uh, I will stop share, who will uh, take it from here and help us run the event for today. Okay, I am trying. So I'm using uh, only one screen today and trying to get my view. It F5. Hmm. Not working. Ah, here you go. There we go. Thank you. You know, I'm used to having two monitors and I'm using one today. So it's uh, it's a little bit uh, different for me. So, okay, well, welcome everyone. And, and thank you to those of you attending and uh, to our great uh, schools that will be, will be presenting today. So we have uh, four different uh, uh, school uh, presenters, we believe 
um, at least scheduled. So we ask that everyone take about 10 minutes and <clears throat> really just address the highlights uh, of your program and what you would like to share. And if there are any um, items that you need help with or that you want to discuss, please make sure that you that you list uh, those as well. And at the um, at the end of the the presentations, uh, which will be in the order that we have them listed here, um, at the end of the presentations, then we'll come back and. Uh, show you who the October presenters are that we have that have asked to be scheduled. And then uh, yeah, we'll do a wrap up and then put us in the breakout room. So we'd love to have about at least 20 minutes at the end of the session, at the end of the pre uh, presentations for for you to select the breakout room that you want to go into and then and then ask any uh, specific uh, questions of that school or that uh, presenter. So uh, Diane, I'm going to uh, stop my share and uh, ask if you will share your screen and then we'll get started. Okay, can you, can you see my screen? You can, thank you. Okay, very good. Let's see if I can run this from the beginning. All right, first, first off, I have to say thank you to everybody who helped me with my uh, technology challenge that I had with getting my logo into the slide. So yeah, thank you so much for, for helping me with that. Um, I, I work at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania. We are a small school in a rural area of North, of North Central Pennsylvania. Um, we have been a CAE since 2016. I've been involved with the CAE program for many, many, many years. And so I initiated the um, designation for the university and I pretty much did the entire application myself. Um, so uh, this time around with redesignation, it was a little bit easier. We redesignated this past year. And um, the new process, I must say, I really like the new process a lot better than the old process. So it, it made things much easier. So I appreciate everything that the program office has done to make that process a little bit more transparent. Um, our validated program of study is in uh, located in our mathematical and digital sciences department in the School of Science and Technology. So right here is a link to our program. I'm going to bring up the website if it will come up for me. And um, in, in our department, we also have computer science, data science, which is a new program mathematics, and then statistics. So we have um, a certain course sequence that we do with our program, and we have a, a degree checklist. So under our degree checklist, and I think I have this on the next slide, but I'm going to bring it up a little bit so you can see that we require 24 credits for um, digital forensics and then nine electives along with about 15 math and computer science courses. Uh, along with that, we require certain gen eds that the students take three math courses, a philosophy course, criminal justice, and some basic English. So that's a little bit about the program and um, what we require from the students. Currently, we do not have any other a program of studies that are validated through um, the designation process. Our computer science program is ABED accredited. The digital uh, or the data science uh, program, that's pretty new. And so we haven't done anything with that yet. But the focus of our program is investigative because as you saw from what I brought up, we require that the students take um, at least 33 credits and the majority of those are under digital forensics. The program had started out originally as a digital forensic program and we renamed the program, I would guess um, about two years ago to include cybersecurity because we found that we were missing um, a lot of maybe the target audience because we had such a focus on digital forensics and we didn't include a lot of those other courses. When I first, I've been at the university for about 10 years. And when I first came to the university, we had 
only about four required courses. They were all digital forensic courses. And then a lot of the other courses were focused on math and uh, computer science. And so since then we have added um, a requirement for a security course. And we've also added a lot of electives that the students can take and they range uh, anywhere from current topics in cybercrime all the way up to internet of things forensics. So we have a wide variety of um, electives that the students can take. So really our subject matter expertise in mind would be digital forensic processes and curriculum. And I just went through this, we require 24, 24 credits plus nine plus 15 plus the other gen is. The total program is 120 credits. This is a little overview of the what our program looks like. And this is just the digital forensics and cybersecurity program. This is uh, doesn't include anything in computer science or data science or any of that. It's just our program. In uh, 2019, we had 217 students. It grew, it was growing quite exponentially. And then, you know, in the year 2020, 2021, 20, around that time, COVID hit. And so we lost some of our population due to when COVID hit, there were students that weren't gonna come back for the 21, 22 school year because they were unsure of how processes were gonna work and they were unsure of what was gonna happen with the, uh, with the virus. Uh, but um, our population has pretty much um, stabilized now and our projections for next year have gone up. The other thing about our population is if you look at it, we're 80% male, 20% female. Uh, I've been trying to do the best that I can to encourage uh, the female students to become a little bit more active. Um, I was involved in several writing projects about women in technology, you know, and how we have those kind of challenges with getting female students enrolled. Um, I must say, though, that our population has a much better female population than our computer science program. Our computer science program probably only has a three to 5% female population. So it's a little bit better than average. However, it's not really what I would like to see, but um, you know, the, the, the numbers are the numbers. So there's not uh, too much that I can say about that. As far as our next uh, potential for next validated programs of study, I kind of looked at this a little bit. We did, I had it, we had a dean who really wanted to do a certificate program. And so I was in charge of spearheading that program. Um, it hasn't got off the ground very much. We have maybe three to five students in it. Sometimes I find that the students that go for the certificate are students that started working towards a four year degree and have not, um, and, and decided to not continue their education. And so to feel that they haven't wasted their time, they want that certificate. The certificate is six courses. So when I look at that, um, I, I started looking at it a little bit. I think I have to do uh, a little bit more research into the uh, KU requirements and how I can align the KUs because with only six courses, sometimes that presents a little bit of an issue. But because some of the courses or the majority of the courses that are already in there are part of the program of study validation that we currently have, that would be my, my next move simply because um, there would be a lot less work in it, most of it's done. The next validation uh, under the program of study under mathematical and digital sciences would probably be the computer science program. The computer science program is ABET accredited and so we all know with ABET accreditation, there's tons of assessment information that's required and things like that. And you gotta have all your PLOs in line. So as far as getting through that first part, validating the program of study, because it's ABET accredited, it probably would be a, a decent choice. For me, I think the challenge is, is because I'm the only one really that knows a lot about how the process works, um, I usually am the one who tends to do all the work 
and the majority of the time there's no um, extra compensation for me involved <laughs> so you know there are times when I have to think about it it's like well gee do I really want to take this on but these would be the two next programs that uh, you know that we would look at the next one research projects I put these up here we are a, we are primary teaching institution so we don't do a lot of research. Our faculty have full teaching loads. This semester, I have five classes. I mean, we have full teaching loads, overloads. You know, so we don't spend a lot of time on research. But what we do do is we have what's called professional experience grants, where faculty work with students in a professional experience environment to give them um, a experience in certain things. So we've had one that was to develop code to retrieve information from social media websites. Then we also have ERSCAs, which is undergraduate research scholarly and creativity um, activities. These a lot of times are done over the summer. So all of these ERSCAs are done over the summer. And you can see that, you know, they're all pretty much forensic focused, um, open source intelligence, human trafficking, virtual machines, and that. So that's an overview of some of the, the summer projects that we work on. And these are projects that were conducted in what is called our um, Pennsylvania Center for Digital Forensics, which was a collaboration of the university and law enforcement. And so we had a separate lab where students went in, up there and worked with some of the police departments. So you see, we have one in here about escort websites and sex trafficking and things like that. So that's the majority of uh, how our research projects are conducted and, uh, and the focus and when they're conducted. So our specialties are digital forensics and cybersecurity with a very strong focus in forensics. Subject matter expertise, again, is forensic curriculum and most forensic areas. As far as the current grants go, right now we have none. Our university is in the state of flux. We are integrating three universities into one. Our chancellor has our state system. All the, all the institutions are uh, connected through the state system. And our chancellor has taken three universities in the West, three universities in the East, and, call, and made them work together. So we're integrated. So that's caused a lot of challenges for us. Grant collaboration capabilities for anyone who has any interest in working in either digital forensic curriculum, smart device forensic, social media forensics, or open source intelligence forensics, I would be more than happy to work with anybody or our faculty would be more than happy to work with institutions on those types of projects. Currently, we don't have any grants going because right now, um, even with our scholarships, because of the, the change of the name and the integration, it's just really, really, really too messy to try and do grants right now. Uh, in the past, we have partnered with um, Robert Morris uh, to do some curriculum support and some grants. And uh, prospective local community colleges, we have tried to do some local community college, um, the CAE, integration and it didn't work too well and it may have been the people that we were involved in and then also um you know the institutions that we are absorbing can they become caes at this point i'm not really sure i don't know so i'm pretty i'm getting pretty really close on time here so i want to kind of wrap it up for under the um, enhancements and gaps so just like any other institution faculty budget space we have all of those issues um, we have hard, if anybody has hardware suggestions on a hardware course, we want to put in a hardware course, we don't have the lab space, we don't have the hardware, nobody wants to manage the inventory. So how do you teach students about hardware without having a hardware lab? I don't know, but if anybody has any uh, good ideas, let me know. Um, I'm looking for some suggestions on tools and cases for forensic. Uh, right now, these last couple semesters, I'm teaching e-discovery. So I have, um, you know, I'm trying to get free software, you know, trial softwares that we can use. And then the last thing that I would be looking for help for would be cybersecurity integration with high school curriculum in rural communities. And I know that um, uh, Kareem basically touched a little bit on that about NCL for high schools. So that may be a way to go. Uh, the area that we live in is primary. The high schools are all really 
concentrated on liberal arts. They do a lot of music programs, a lot of musicals, things like that. And the cyber end of it, usually there's not a lot of focus on. So we, you know, we have challenges there. And my last slide is um, additional information about us. Like some institutions were facing sweeping changes in the way we educate since COVID. A lot of our classes are hybrid, Zoom or online. Um, focusing on skills, especially soft skills and critical thinking has been a bit of a challenge, but we have really begun offering security pipe on the file systems courses for other departments by listing them as gen eds. So we're making some progress, but we still have some issues, issues to address. So that's a little bit about Bloomsburg University and our program. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I appreciate it. Thanks, Diane. Great job. Thank um, you. Yeah, I, I know as you were going through and, and asking about um, if others had ideas, I, I saw that Yair put a couple of things in the chat. Um, so you could check those. And I don't know, Yair, if you just want to mention those briefly at this point. Sure. So there are uh, plenty uh, opportunities for virtual labs that allow hardware. Uh, you may want to check. So we're using in, in our graduate uh, the test out uh, platform, the Security uh, Pro. And we're using in our undergraduate immersive labs. Uh, uh, Chris Simpson, I don't know if he's on uh, today, but he has been um, working and advocating all those free and freemium uh, type of uh, platforms. If you want, then uh, I will send you his email address. And uh, by all means, go ahead and reach out to him. He will point you to the um, different resources that are available. He did share many of uh, resources in Clark. Uh, and so make sure you have access to Clark. I'll, I'll post the link shortly. We can follow up on that, but just to educate everyone else as well. Okay, Th and thank you, Yair. I appreciate that. I mean, right now we're using Cengage and the, the environment goes down. You know, last week I had six students emailing me. I can't get in to do it. So I, you sure. know, I'm looking for some reliable resources. Yes. So I appreciate anything you can forward. Thank you. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. Good discussion. Uh, Filippo, are you are ready for our DePaul University? <laughs> you can share your screen, please. Yep, I am ready. Here it is. I think you can see it. Um, slideshow. Good. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Dan. Um, so I, uh, I'm Philip. I'm the uh, whatever principal uh, contact from uh, from the poll. The poll's um, CAE since two thousand and five. So quite a long time, um, and uh, we have been uh, uh, honored to be part of CAE. And um, year on year, uh, reviews change, as you mentioned. Um, it's getting more fun, so that's uh, it's uh, yeah. Uh, we we like it and enjoy it, and we'll continue doing it, um, or at least as I'm as long as I'm there. I don't know. <laughs> um, so our uh, our uh, program of studies, uh, Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity, is under the School of Computing. Um, we uh, it's one of the four cybersecurity programs that we have. We have. Bachelor in Network Engineering and Security. We have Masters in Cybersecurity. We have Masters in uh, Network Engineering and, and Security. So um, we allow uh, for something called Double Demon because we are uh, the Blue Demons. So, oops. Um, so students can take uh, the Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity and um, can continue taking the Masters in each of the programs where uh, we allow for at least three of the courses in the Masters to be taken as part of the Bachelor, but not the one that we have into the approved. Mostly, <laughs> mostly electives that um, that uh, we can waive individually the the prerequisites. So um, our focus is mostly on uh, in the Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity is mostly on security architecture, mostly on network defense. Our capstones are um, uh, two quarter span or spans or, uh, over two quarter uh, into this program and. Uh, it's um, divided in um, covering extensive network security, um, uh, vulnerability analysis, and a lot of network uh, network defenses. With um, also focus on on system um, <clears throat> on system design. Our program is um, has a lot of a lot of electives. We have, as I said, 
We mostly do network security. We do human-centered security. Uh, we do software parts, and we are mo uh, we are also focused on cybersecurity education and cybersecurity uh, gamification. Um, our next uh, uh, program of study will be naturally the master of cybersecurity. We have three concentrations there uh, because we have a little bit. Uh, um, wider net that we allow for uh, students to come in. So uh, there are three different flavors that they can choose from. Uh, one is networking infrastructure. If they prefer more doing network configuration and firewalls and, and um, intrusion detection stuff um, and IoT, uh, things like that. Um, we have computer security for people who are most interested into software security, vulnerability uh, mitigation and all that. And we have a third concentration about governance, risk management, and compliance for those who are neither nor, for those who come in into my office in this period of year and said, I don't know anything <laughs> and I want to do <laughs> risk, <laughs> which is good. I, we have a lot of students who have taken other, um, who have bachelors in other uh, domains, but they also like to be into cybersecurity. And this is a perfect fitting that they can come in. It's, they, they have to take introductory courses here. so. Um, they cert we certainly ensure that they have the knowledge, skills, and abilities that they need to, but uh, mostly later on, it's driven towards risk uh, management, compliance, and, uh, and governance. Uh, uh, we work, uh, of course, I put my lab first. <laughs> uh, well, uh, of course, bias. <laughs> um, we, I, uh, my lab does a lot of... Uh, Social media security, information, disinformation, uh, information operations, adversarial machine learning, how that uh, can be, how you can actually detect online trolling, how you can evade online trolling and how you can evade anything that it's employed for uh, for uh, tracking this kind of uh, uh, deviant behavior online. We do a lot of uh, research on social engineering and a lot of the research in the internet of, of things and uh, these are a couple of the projects that I cover into into the lab but there are other other faculty into the cybersecurity program are mostly focused on vulnerability um I think I have them here um vulnerability hunting uh, uh we have faculty who work on uh, software security um I'm heavily involved in cybersecurity education as I'm one of the principal designers of teach cyber curriculum for high school um, uh, students and we run as part of the DePaul, we run the first National Cybersecurity Teaching Academy uh, that prepares teachers to offer a standalone cybersecurity course in high school for a semester or for a year. So now we have, that's a coalition, I will talk a little bit later about it, but uh, we do a lot of work, I do a lot of work with that and um, uh, I, I, I like it and it's part of, it's part of the CAE. Um, and uh, we did a presentation in uh, Mississippi a month ago, I think. Um, so uh, we currently we have that grant that runs the National Service Security Teaching Academy. Uh, we also have a SATSI grant for uh, detecting and running vulnerabilities. We have one in preparation that's synergetic to NCAE grant that has to do NCTA style of preparation, but only for Chicago here, large school district means yeah, it will be in uh, Chicago school district. So uh, that's the that's the idea. We uh, and uh, in future we would like to extend the National Cyber Security Teaching Academy because we have only three regions from CAE. We don't have them all, and uh, myself and uh, other two faculty from the leadership, Philip uh, Huff from uh, University of Arkansas Little Rock and uh, Adele from University of Louisville. We are happy to uh, onboard anyone who wants to offer um, this certification that we have under the ASC, ACTA. Uh, and we also plan to extend anything that we uh, want to do in terms of preparing high school teachers to help um, uh, students get more acquainted and get cybersecurity instead of robotics, uh, which is, again, more of a selfish because we want to have enrollments and the, be the best way to do enrollments. <laughs> It's all good and, 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 and well, but uh, we fight for, for student talent and, and uh, especially in Chicago, we have like a massive, massive student talent that spills out of the state and goes elsewhere. And uh, it's just the one train right away from, from taking a, a bachelor's in, 
uh, here and we I, I don't like that I like them to stay um, stay as much as the one um, here. Um, we work as I said NCT is a partnership with all with other eight other institutions that are listed here um, and I'm uh, very pleased that we work very nicely and smoothly and that uh, the, the teaching academy has just concluded its first year and uh, teachers are uh, pretty much half exasperated, half bamboozled and half uh, happy that they <laughs> learned a lot uh, <laughs> and that uh, uh, it's um, it's good for their advancement and uh, it's good for offering uh, cyber security class, especially in uh, school districts that they don't have much of um, resources because we provide a lot of resources, we provide uh, uh, we help with them to with the curriculum. We help with them with uh, with labs. We help with them with uh, tailoring whatever they need precisely because every school district has a different school uh, makeup and cohorts. And uh, certainly, that's that the most of the help that the academy helps with is how to tailor a course that will help maximize the the learning uh, for cyber security for students who will later on pursue a career in one of the CAs. Um, where I am I'm here. Uh, oops. Um, so what we did in our uh, uh, program, we we constantly change the program. We have a very fast uh, process of approvals um, of, of classes and updates of classes that doesn't have to go up to up to the provost. Uh, we focus now on uh, independent studies and research work where students want to do um, independent work. We certainly encourage work with them with faculty. Um, and we also have a lot of emphasis of, of DevOps and uh, independent threat observation and work. Uh, and uh, students as part of the capstone and classes before the capstone have a lot of individual works that they have to do um, um, by themselves that with, with under, under our, our supervision. But uh, we're kind of trying to depart a little like more and more from kind of here it is a homework and then you finish and here are the grades. It more so that we'd like to do like, instead of two plus two equals four, we more give them like four equals question mark and it's up to them to, to answer what, what four, four is. So we kind of change that kind of teaching uh, paradigm in, as part of our, of our programs. And another change that we make from this year is that we have kind of industry people. What we do is we have our um, graduates from uh, our alumni from the capstone and our program serve on some kind of industry board into, into the capstone. And for uh, 22 weeks, they kind of work with small projects and observe how uh, students work and students report to them. So they ask questions every month and uh, kind of work with a project that they have been assigned to, to see how to mimic and kind of replicate the most uh, what students will get in when they go work into into uh, into professional uh, settings. So uh, that will be mostly all if you're interested in ACTA, if you have any other questions, if you're interested into uh, whatever else we do as part of the designation, I'm happy to answer questions. You have my mail, my phone, uh, you can always ask everything. But uh, yeah, I think I have, yeah, 10 minutes and 57 seconds. So <laughs> <laughs> Great timing. Everybody was uh, on time today. And, and uh, of course, we uh, are not seeing all four of our presenters. So uh, that that's the way it works, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, let's go ahead. And let me see if I one more time, I'm having trouble getting this one screen to, to view. Uh, just a second. Hold on. May just have to look at it here. There we go. Okay, so um, next, uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, discuss with you the um, the next four schools that are that are scheduled to present, and our uh, next time is on October the thirteenth. So we have Grand Canyon University and uh, City University of Seattle, and then University of Maryland Global Campus. And then uh, College of Southern uh, Nevada will be presenting next time. So um, what I'd like to do is um, just remind everyone who's going to be presenting is that you have to, to be registered. 
and uh, we have the registration on here. And um, Yair uh, will take us, uh, I believe we have some general discussion uh, scheduled next, and then um, he will take us into the breakout rooms. And you know, the good news today is that we have uh, plenty of time to have some really good in-depth discussions in the breakouts, but thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sandra, for everything. And of course, we need to thank also Gretchen, who is helping us, and she's today in the event in the Northwest uh, event that they're running for CAE. So um, bear with me. I'm going to be sharing again. Uh, tell me if you can see the site, and I'm going to share that in the chat again, just to remind everyone uh, that we're updating the website regularly. Uh, a couple of things about um, upcoming events. Uh, first of all, to update everyone, especially the new CAEs uh, in the crowd that uh, we've posted um, a couple of months ago, the, all the aliases for the PMO, you're more than welcome. It's an image, so you will have to retype those. Uh, we did it on purpose, so uh, uh, you know web trolls uh, are going to have difficulties uh, grabbing those emails, and so just uh, retype those emails if you need but you have that as a one-stop shop uh, for resources. Of course, we have the event uh, that we're running every month. As uh, Sandra mentioned, here is the registration. We did add to it that we are um, verifying that the registrations are coming from either CAEs or those that are under the program development or application assistance, which is what uh, Corrine uh, mentioned before. Uh, those who are, who are in the process of becoming CAEs are welcome to attend this event, but not present. Uh, but we will monitor this. Uh, just make sure if you're registered or anyone else, we would, we would not approve any .com or uh, Gmail account or anything like that. You got to use your, uh, your, your .edu email uh, only. Uh, just to uh, ensure that you know those who are coming to this these events are um, are vetted and CAE is part of the CAEs. Uh, we are going to kick off shortly again the the uh, process for collecting all your outreach activities. So please make a note on your uh, ongoing, especially for the October Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, so make a note of your impact of your outreach activities, and we're going to be collecting those uh, and uh, prioritizing. And I can tell you that last year we gave uh, awards to the top CAEs and the regions. So please uh, uh, take a look at what we had last year. We're going to be updating this soon in the next month or so for the 2021-2022 competition. And we will celebrate that probably in the 2023 CAE Community uh, Symposium. So just make uh, be aware. Um, we are uh, uh, in the process of the uh, establishing this upcoming event. Uh, we will push out the information regarding the September event that will come up, I think, on September 20th. Um, you uh, be on the lookout uh, for that. And final thing, uh, if you ever want to go back and see the past recordings of all of our past events that we're doing, the monthly uh, uh, events, they're all posted here. And please make sure to give us feedback on the assessment survey. All of you will get an email from me today also on that, uh, asking you to give us feedback. It's very important that we collect that, the program office, uh, the CA community and the program office ask us to uh, collect that feedback. With that said, uh, I'm going to stop here and activate the breakout um, sessions, please. What I would like to ask is the uh, presenters, the two presenters to please go to your own room. That, uh, don't go to someone else's room uh, because there will be people looking for you there. Uh, let me go ahead and first stop the recording. So take care, everyone, and stay stay on.